So there's four organizations at Harvard that revolve around outdoors directly, and I'm involved in all of them. On my gap year, I spent three months backpacking through Patagonia, and just all the national parks there are absolutely stunning. It's, it's just every second, you're like, wow, this is gorgeous. I feel like I'm living in a postcard right now. And I was in the Union dorm this freshman year. My mom was very worried about me getting all the way home by myself late at night from Cabot Science Library. So he walked me home, and it was, it was very sweet. And I, I, I texted my friend before we, like before she was gonna leave, and I was like, and like my friend also was in the Union dorm, so like, of course, it made sense for him to walk with, with us. But I would text him like, yo, yo, like, Stay behind, like let me <laughs> let me walk her back, you know. And he was like, oh, I got you. So he he, he he was a homie for that one. When I told my roommates that I won most chill, my other roommate Nico was like, it should have been me. <laughs> and I think it's Nico. And I think he's so chill that he wouldn't know that these Crimson Superlatives exist. <laughs> and I think that might be the reason why he didn't win. He's always like my uh, like co-partner in being like, oh, like we'll do our homework later. We'll hang out right now. So I, I'd vote him for most chill. My, my girlfriend said that the guy that I was worrying about was just an anatomy mirror, but then I caught them superimposing later, so I know she was lying. That's so niche, I'm sorry. That's so, that's so niche, I'm sorry. If you haven't already, and if you have the means, start investing, because you can take advantage of a lot of compound interest, and you can invest in things that are relatively stable, like, for example, index funds, and by doing so, you can take advantage of compound interest, and that's something that even a three or four year difference, which you can get by starting sooner in your life, translates to huge differences in the overall amount of wealth and money that you will have accrued when you're looking for retiring. I feel like having kind of something, a small part of your everyday look that you're known for can kind of transform anything you're wearing. I mean, even like, I feel like these visual signifiers can be so basic, like even like having like, tangled headphones like it is it's kind of an accessory right like everything you carry with you is like and my 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 key ring like these are visual signifiers that people just associate with me and i feel like having like some degree of like consistency um kind of as a through line all your outfits is a is a good thing i feel like this didn't really answer the question but that's just kind of how i think about some of it so last winter break i went to kenya for three weeks for a study abroad program uh, about wildlife conservation and I came back to Cambridge for two days and I flew to Costa Rica with my roommate um, and the one that was crazy going from Kenya <laughs> which is like an eight hour time difference to Costa Rica um, and completely different environment but Costa Rica was probably some of the, the highest highs and the lowest lows. <laughs> my, my friend Jack and I, our freshman year, we came up with the concept of the 26 hour day you just treat every day as 26 hours. Um, in like two weeks, it'll more or less reset um, back to the same point. So our sleeping patterns would like vary, would shift. Um, so sometimes I'd wake up at like 8 p.m. and I'd start my day, um, or sometimes it'd be like 4 a.m. I don't know. So my thesis combines chemistry and archaeology. Um, I am working with animal bones from the site of Copan in Honduras. It's a Maya site. Um, and we are doing stable isotope analysis, carbon and nitrogen, to try to study animal diet. We were wondering, why does this turkey have such high protein? Why is it consuming a lot of protein? Um, turns out it wasn't a turkey. So a lot of interesting things like that, that uh, we had a lot of assumptions about the types of bones that were at the site that turned out to not be true. So even before we have our full diet results, we have a lot of things like that so far, which have been really cool to discover myself. Um, my mom is the one who taught me how to sew and draw and do all, all the art stuff that I know how to do. That's how she got me started. And she is an engineer. And then from the writing standpoint um, and kind of speech poetry, that kind of standpoint is what my dad taught me. And he's also an engineer. So for me, my entire life, I've always seen art and STEM together because the people who taught me um, art and humanities were both engineers. Um, so I think that's how I got into combining both of them. And then I continue to combine both of them because fashion is my art of like my primary domain that I practice my skills and exercise that a lot. 
and fashion just has so many elements to it that are innately STEM based. We had a phenomenal intramural season. It was insane. We, Dumpster House had not been in the top three in maybe 80 years and we were very, very close to winning last year. It was between Kirkland and us and you know, both sides, spirit was high and people were committed. Ultimately, Kirkland got the dub, but um, I think in a way we also won because of the community that Intermurals fostered for the house. My decision to pursue teaching after undergrad, which is the decision I made, sort of came out of an understanding that was strengthened over my four years here that, um, as Audre Lorde says, without community there is no liberation. Um, and becoming really convinced that uh, loving communities where people, especially young people, are feel seen, feel heard, feel empowered, and are given the knowledge and critical skills to, to change, make change in their communities, that that is really worthwhile work. I was a little bit more risk averse, um, especially back in high school. Um, I think I tended to stay in my lane and to not really try new things and to do things that I was confident in. And I think that coming to college, I realized that um, taking risks is something that I value just because I think that um, I shouldn't be afraid to try new things in case it turns out that I end up really liking them. The most important component of a good party is the dancing. I think there has to be many hours of dancing, there has to be good music, there has to be people participating. Um, because I think when there's a lot of people who are just enjoying themselves and dancing together, I think that leads to the most fun. I mean, I have the most fun at those parties, but I also think they generally produce you know, the most fun and the coolest experiences. On the issue of climate, I think it's the largest issue facing our generation today, just in terms of the potential devastation, consequences, and threats that it poses to society. So I think if I were to ever you know, be in that position where I could affect that change, um, I would absolutely prioritize figuring out how we can create the stable policy, legal, technology, political, and social environment where um, a lot of these clean energy technologies and solutions are really uh, able to become you know, the next big thing.